Hey, welcome to Follow Through. I'm Pastor Fred, and we are unpacking a uh, an equipping, right, in terms of how to do the Christian life, how to be ready to serve, ready to do this disciple-making task, right? So if you're a parent, like, how do I do this with my kids? How, how, how can I be ready? We, we, I, I feel that all the time. I know you do as well. Like, man, I just, I'm not up to the task. Well, here it is. All week, we've given you some stuff. Um, uh, a, a kind of an equipping model, if you will. It spells deeper, because that's what we want to do. We want to get deeper into who Jesus is, what he's done, uh, and, uh, and, you know, just, just abiding in him, staying put as far as where he's at. And so each of those letters means something. So demonstrate, D, right? So we show what it looks like. Uh, e is experience, that we, we invite people to experience what it looks like to serve God, to actually do it to actually maybe have some adversity, uh, struggle through it, right? Because all those experiences help you to help someone else. Uh, the other E was explain. Uh, we, we've got to unpack some, some difficult passages and explain kind of what th certain things mean. And so being a student of the word, important, important, important. Uh, so that's D, we got E, we got the other E, the P, we, we, we talked about, um, and it was practice. Uh, for, for the discipler and the disciple e um, practice so important that we continue to, to look at things and, and continue to use them and work on them and you know we don't just uh, brush over things but we we continually 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 this is our life this is what we do yesterday we talked about expose um, right what, what's going wrong what what what's there that's that's a problem in that process of equipping. What's keeping me from being ready? Well, maybe there's sin in my life. Maybe there's issues in my life. Maybe I'm afraid, maybe, you know, maybe I'm just, I, I, I'm not spending any time in the Word, but yet I expect to be a Bible scholar, right? God's Word's gonna expose that. And, and, and we wanna be honest with each other on where those blind spots, where those difficulties might be, uh, even those places of danger might be. We're gonna be loving and point them out really for the sake of equipping sake of being ready. So, drum roll please, we're going to get into the last letter, which is R for reflect. This is really important. It's one that we often skip, um, right? We're busy, you know, getting the word out. We got to get some experiences out. We got to do all those things, um, right? And remember in, in the, the scriptures, uh, it was in Luke where Jesus sent out those disciples, right? He sent them out and uh, there were 72 of them. And he was like, you're gonna go and heal, uh, you're gonna preach, you're gonna do all those things. Uh, and, uh, and they come back and they are like psyched. They are psyched. And uh, they have seen, they have experienced, right? They have all those things happen. Maybe some things were exposed in them, right? They, they, ran into, they ran up against stuff that they were like, man, I don't know how to do that. Uh, and you know, it was just crazy. Uh, they, they said they fought, they saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I mean, they saw some amazing things. And Jesus says, um, and I'm going to back up to 19 uh, in Luke 10. Uh, we're going to look at 19 and 20. He says, behold, I've given you power to tread on demons and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and, and nothing shall hurt you. In other words, man, you've got power. you got power. You experienced that power. You're going to experience that power. Nevertheless, and this is the reflection part, don't rejoice in this. Like, don't get so excited about the power and what you could do, what you could do, but realize it was God's power to begin with. Right, so it's not a celebration of you, it's a celebration of God's amazing grace. So when we take time to reflect, we can take time to look at what happened. We can take time to kind of step back a little bit and go, okay, so, so what really went down? Um, what was great about it? What, what, what was God pleasing? What wasn't? Gives us a chance to do all the other things, right? To expose some things, to, to help some things to grow, to maybe get some pruning in there, um, some watering, some, right? And all of those things can happen. So he says, don't rejoice in this, that, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. See, the, the object of reflecting with Jesus is always that they would know the truth, right? That, that they would know that truth and that truth would set them free. That they would know who he is, that he loves them. That they would have no illusions that they could save themselves, but they would be crystal clear that they were sinners 
that, but that Jesus, that he had come to die for them and rise for them and that he did all of that so that their names would be written in heaven. Okay, you could think of this as getting the big picture, right? Getting some perspective, looking at kind of the end of things and, and where we're headed. That's awesome. Because as I reflect, I can see that. I can see, okay, this is where I'm heading, right? My name is written in the book of life. I'm, I'm gonna spend eternity with God. And so that's gonna influence how I do life and what matters to me. And Jesus is hitting something that's pretty important. He says, when you take the time to reflect, sometimes we get a little bit carried away with power that's given to us, even if it's God's power, especially when it's God's power. Right? The devil can use that. Our own hearts can use that to focus on what we did, forgetting that anything that we did that was good, anything that was godly, anything where, where someone was set free from oppression or healed of anything was God. 100% was his work, his power, his ability. Let's rejoice in that. Let's rejoice in who he is. Let's, let's go back and focus. And you really need to, to take that time to reflect to get that, right? So let's look at all of them together, right? This is the big culmination, deeper. And so this is the equipping model that we would demonstrate, right? And look at demonstrations of God's love and his power, right? Jesus did that by washing the disciples' feet and then experiencing it, right? They literally experienced him washing their feet, right? And then he explained why. This is, I've shown you, because this is what humility looks like. This is what real good greatness looks like. This is why I came to serve you and to, to love you and to forgive you. And you should do that for each other right? And practice. Keep doing that. He says, you will, this is a blessed thing when you do that. That's the other, that's the P for practice, right? And then expose, right? Is they, they needed that experience and demonstration and explanation and practice. Why? Because they were fighting over who was greatest, right? We do that. There's sin in us, man. There's problems in us. And Jesus died to forgive them, died to, to, to destroy them, died to, 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 to finish them completely, right? And to give us eternal life. And so let's take that time today and reflect. Take that time as often as we can to look at the big picture, to see, okay, what really does matter at the end of the day? Because maybe you might see that you're making it all about you, okay? And, and the problem, but that obviously is it robs God of his glory, but it also robs you of your motivation because not everybody's going to be excited about that. Right? The evil spirits, the, the wickedness and, and, and evil people are not going to like when you call them on that. They're not going to like it when other people are set free because it's one less person on their team and on their side. Right? But we focus on Jesus and how much he loves us, how much he is with us. I want you to, to, to reflect on that today. Reflect on Him. Take that all in. And, and then again, th there's someone in your life that needs to see and needs you to be that guide for them, to equip them to follow Jesus and to, um, to, and to follow Jesus in such a way that they also have someone in their life that they can show. Right? So we make disciples that make disciples that make disciples. You have a great rest of your week. We'll be back next week for another set of follow-throughs. Um, hit that subscribe button and share this with somebody and we'll talk to you next time.